Hello there. Happy Friday once again. I'm super excited to be in here today to share a little bit about what we have been doing this week. Uh, my name is Julie Hirschberg. I'm the owner of Reactive Physical Therapy and Wellness in Los Angeles. And this week was so exciting because we opened back up. Oh my goodness. I, I'm at home now, but this morning I was at the clinic and I've seen a few patients in in person this week and it is just so lovely to see real faces and even see other our team in person hear their voices in person see them in three dimensions it's been so nice and i'm so thankful and our team is just doing an amazing job screening everybody that comes in we've all got our masks on um so really it's only seeing half faces but it's just been really nice uh, to to do that and i'm looking forward to 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 much more of that so that's what's happening over here at reactive uh, another big thing that has happened is we had one of our fellowship mini courses and it's one of our most popular ones because it's a, a, a tricky problem to solve and that is looking at low back pain and campsicormia in parkinson's so what we're going to dive in today is just a little recap specifically on one part of this and that's the algorithm and i really love a good diagram or a good table to organize things and to help me sort through complex problems and this one i adore because i got to work on it with Brittany kim our fellow therapist here at reactive and her background is in orthopedics orthopedics in uh, orthopedic management in patients with neurologic disorders. So I feel so lucky to have that perspective when we're talking. And a lot of times we're talking, we're going, oh, this overlap. And we're really trying to merge uh, some topics together and tease them out. And that's exactly what we did with this algorithm. So let's, let's dive right in. Now, like I did last week, just a a brief little review here because what is camptochormia? So you probably have seen this before. Camptochormia is diagnosed when there's a forward trunk uh, flexion in Parkinson's disease that's greater than 45 degrees, but it reverses in other positions. And you might also see a side bend that's called Pisa syndrome if it's greater than 10 degrees. We usually see both of those actually together, and a lot of times there's low back pain involved. And so one of the questions that we ask ourselves a lot is like, how, how do I know what caused what? What is making what worse? How do I treat both? Hence the algorithm. So I'm going to go step by step and just show you show you what we have here. So first, the first question is: Does the person with the Camptochormia or Pisa syndrome have low back pain? And if the answer is no, then you can just kind of not even address the green side over here, which is really addressing the back pain portion. And again, you can go and then address the posture problem by looking at what are the underlying factors. And so if there's not pain, those underlying factors are, is it dopamine responsive? Let me see if I can kind of get this up here and talk at the same time. So is it dopamine responsive? Is it sensory driven or dystonia? Is it muscle weakness? So sometimes this is with a myopathy, and we talked about the dystonia part last time, or is it dysautonomia, which, surprise, might cause a posture problem. So those are the main things underlying a posture problem. And when we look at those, we look at intense exercise. Some people improve really nicely with intense exercise, with changes in medication. Uh, we look at their balance systems and sensory organization and vestibular, which we talked a little bit about last week with subjective visual vertical. We might use muscle testing and surface EMG, and we might look at their vital signs. So that is what might be underlying, and we would then assess and treat that for the Camptochormia or Pisa syndrome. 
But here's where it gets really good is the green side because so many people also have back pain and we need to sort that out. So if the answer to back pain is yes, then we're going along the green side of the chart. And here, um, Brittany really put together a really simplified way to look at this based on the SMART article, which is from 2010. There's a lot of a lot of algorithms and uh, ways to classify low back pain. This is pain mechanisms. Is it nociceptive, peripheral neuropathic, central pain, or we added another category here, Parkinson's disease related pain because some of the pain is actually related to the dopamine depletion and therefore it would respond to dopamine. So as we try to tease out what kind of pain we've listed then under each how you might assess that, which would then lead to treatment. So things like for the nociceptive, looking at their active range of motion, joint mobility and palpation. If it's peripheral neuropathic, looking at those neurodynamics and doing your neuro screen to confirm that. If it's central, looking at things like laterality, two-point discrimination and some of those self-reported outcomes. So here's the thing, you want to discover the source of pain so that you can directly treat the source of it. The, number two is probably the biggest piece, is determining the postural pain connection. So for example, a simplified example is that um, if, the, if we talk chicken or egg, if the pain came on first and they've shifted away from that side and shifting towards it causes pain, then that piece of syndrome may be actually driven by the pain. And as the pain issue resolves, they may be able to shift back and be more symmetrical. So that that's a, a simplified example of determining that postural pain connection. So this is where you tease these pieces out, but then you actually need to bring them together, right? So we tease out the source of pain and we're gonna treat that. And we tease out some of the underlying pathophysiology of the posture problem. But then we need to look for the interconnection and bring those together. So one of the uh, one of our action items at the end of the course last night was like, what is your best one man band kind of intervention? What could you do that would address those things all at the same time? The pain, the pain mechanism, that link between the posture and the pain, and those mechanisms that might be driving the posture problem. So that's my action item to you. What are some things that you can do? And there's not one answer here because everybody has a different combo here. And in our course, we actually went through four cases where people had different combinations of pain mechanisms as well as drivers from, their, from the Parkinson's disease for their posture problem. So there's infinite. I mean, look at this. This is a lot of different combinations. And so you can treat that very individually. So uh, I love a good algorithm. I love a good uh, classification system to help me sort through. This is available for you to download. So I'll post this in our comments, um, but it's uh, reactiveeducation.com slash LBP, low back pain, so pretty simple. Um, you can sign up there and an email, you'll get an email with this as a download. Um, use it. I think it'd be helpful um, for students. We use a lot of these things. And in fact, a lot of these things we've developed for new people in the clinic, for our fellows, for students to help sort through a complex problem that has multiple layers that you could use a little guidance for. So it's yours. Uh, go ahead and download it. And um, if you're interested in diving in more, we recorded our course, so it's available to you as well. Our next course is coming up in July on ataxia, another hot topic. And thanks so much. Thanks so much for uh, being a really great 
uh, supportive learning community. I can't tell you how much I am proud to be a healthcare provider and proud to be a group of people that have really come together to support each other in this crazy time. So thank you so much and I will catch you next week. Have a great Memorial Day weekend.